beautiful Green Bay, Wisconsin. And uh, yeah, up to uh, another fresh start here. So it's been uh, kind of a crazy past few months. And uh, I am up here once again to go back to the pumpkin patch. So yeah, going back to Schneider, uh, but uh, not going the company route this time. So I'm gonna do a, a Schneider lease this time around. Um, and uh, looking very much forward to that. And uh, so I've got a truck all waiting for me for tomorrow. Um, so I think it's Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday in orientation here in Green Bay. And then hit the road, dispatch myself, and run my own load. So that should be exciting. Um, and anybody that has been through Schneider in Green Bay, of course, knows the lovely hotel behind me. Uh, that is the Tundra Lodge. Uh, the Tundra Lodge is a Schneider staple uh, when you're in uh, Green Bay. Um, it's actually quite a nice hotel. It's, it's a big water park on the inside and stuff. So for anybody that has kids, uh, I mean, fantastic. <laughs> I mean, they got all sorts of water stuff in there. And then uh, a little bit down that away, which you can't see through all of, uh, you know, it's a little bit too far away, but basically down that away uh, on that main street back over there uh, is Lambaugh Field. So um, if you're ever up here uh, in the uh, football season, um, and if there happens to be a Packer game on one of the evenings that you are here, uh, be prepared for an absolutely insane uh, busy hotel, because uh, this place packs up full of, well, no pun intended, full of Packer fans. And uh, it is a, a gigantic party in this place. Um, not that great for all of us Schneider folks that have to wake up at zero dark 30 in the morning because they start uh, all the orientation stuff starts at 630 in the morning. Um, so that means you got to be up very early. Uh, but hey, it's all good. It all works. So uh, going to go get myself checked in and go chill out. And uh, tomorrow the fun begins. The next day. Well, it's nice of them to have my truck parked and washed and ready to go. How about this thing? There's from, something from the Wayback Machine. Yeah. Back from the early, early, early days when men were men and livestock was scared. No, I kid, I kid. But look at this thing. I wonder what year it is. I think I'll ask one of the instructors, see if I can find out. That is one well-preserved old piece of equipment. One eternity later. All right, well, it's official. I am now a uh, an independent contractor with uh, SFI. Going to be running loads under uh, Schneider's load board. So uh, I figure as far as uh, being a lease operator is concerned, it's probably one of the safer vets, if there is such a thing, uh, since... Uh, you know, signing under uh, uh, Schneider's authority, that means uh, that I'll be running off of their load board, which of course means, you know, running Schneider's freight. Well, of course, anybody that knows anything about the freight business knows that companies like Schneider, uh, all of their freight is pretty much contracted freight. And uh, the devastation in the industry right now is, is mostly the spot market that can almost <laughs> cease to exist. Uh, you know, I shouldn't say that, it's not quite that severe, but uh, the spot rate market is an absolutely abysmal horror show right now. And uh, Schneider really doesn't dabble in that much. So, uh, you know, most of the freight they haul is a uh, very big company to very big company and it's all under contract. So, um, you know, it's not always gonna be the greatest paying stuff that's out there. Uh, however, it's the most consistent because it's, it's always there. It's a lot less volatile. Um, and I happen to live in uh, about midway between Chicago and Milwaukee, and that is a tremendously strong market, especially for Schneider. Uh, the Midwest is kind of their thing. Um, so I've got a whole crap ton of freight to pick from. Uh, so I figured, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a good chance to kind of spread my wings and uh, go independent and not have to be uh, dealing with somebody babysitting me and telling me where to go and all of that kind of crap. So, um, you know, I kind of feel like I've, I've, I've paid my dues a little bit and uh, I'm a smart person and 
I really don't need anybody pointing me in the right direction at this point. Um, I know a good load when I see one. I know the lanes I like to run. I know how I like to run. Um, and I know there's money to be made. So uh, anyway, I am standing in front of the new truck, which is a quote unquote gently used truck. Um, it is a 2022 Freightliner Cascadia. Um, 148,000 miles on the odometer, so it is uh, just still breaking in as far as I'm concerned. Um, and uh, quite happy with it. It's in great shape. So uh, I've already got my mascot in the windshield. I don't know if you can see <laughs> behind me, uh, but there's the shark in there for Land Shark. And uh, I know you've seen a zillion and one uh, truck tours on the internet, but let's go ahead and take a look inside and just I'll give you a quick peek around. So there she is in all her glory. Uh, again, 22 Freightliner, 148,000 miles. They call this medium rich blue. I call it beautiful. Love the color. And uh, one of the things I love about how uh, Schneider specs their trucks, their fleet trucks, and these are fleet trucks, um, is that door right there. That's something that's increasingly rare uh, not a lot of companies ordering trucks that way anymore, uh, but that is an emergency escape door, um, which very few Freightliners have anymore. So uh, it's only one on the passenger side. However, at least it's one. Uh, and that way it gives you another point of exit from the truck in an emergency, which is, I think, an extremely important thing. Uh, plus, it's convenient as hell uh, when you want to load stuff in and out. Uh, because that door is right at bunk height. So your door, your uh, bed is pretty much right there. So I'm gonna pop this door open uh, just so you guys can see it if you've never seen one before. Uh, both of the releases are here. The lower one is for the lower door there, that one, uh, side compartment door. And then the top one uh, is for, I don't know if you can see that on the camera. So that's the lower release, that's the top door. Go pull that open and voila. So now you can get inside uh, and get out of the vehicle if you have to. Now I've got all my crap in there. I just threw all of my stuff in there. I have not even begun to set up yet. Uh, but like I said, all these heavy bins and stuff, instead of having to go through the passenger door or whatever, um, you can go right through the side, which I think is tremendously useful um makes uh makes things a lot easier um, but again there's that gorgeous color uh absolutely love it um truck's in great shape checked it out tap to bottom um whoever had it took very nice care of it and of course before schneider lets any truck get on the road they're going to do a whole bunch of inspecting because if there's ever a company that is absolutely harping on safety, 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 safety all the time, it is Schneider. Um, I know that from experience. <laughs> and they're not bullshitting. They mean it. Um, so kudos to them for that. I always appreciate that because I like living. And I like making sure other people are living too. So uh, kudos to them for that. Um, but anyway, yeah, you see on this side that door you know the, the the stamp you know the imprint is there but that actually does not open uh the side the side door does that that uh lower door there that does of course the side box but not the top one um but let's let's take a peek inside and uh, i wish they didn't do the safety yellow handles but they do i guess i'll get used to it uh but this is the first truck i've had that has the uh the safety yellow not a big fan but all right you know not a big deal i i get it um, you know, I guess they want to make damn sure you can see <laughs> where the grab handles are. So let me get in here. Ugh. There's my little shark. Land shark, get it? All right, and the driver's seat view. Uh, let's see, we got Schneider's tablet there. You can see off to the right. Anyway, uh, there she is. There's the dash. Zoom in a little bit there. And let's say we try and fire it up, shall we? Let's see it go through all of its freight liner stuff. 
all the computers and sensors and all that shit. And there we go. Ooh, she's got a fast idle right now. Get that voltage up. And you can see 148,000 miles. But there she is, all fired up. And then let's see if we can swing away from that. Let's see some of the dash. Now I got crap all over the place because, mind you, I just transferred all of my stuff from my car. Just kind of threw it into the truck every which way. So, um, you know, it's a disaster at the moment. I mean, it's clean. They did a nice job cleaning it up. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, and of course, because I'm the anal, anal retentive neat freak that I am, uh, when I say it's trashed and stuff is all over the place, of course, you know, everything's neatly done in boxes and all that kind of stuff, because that's just me. <laughs> it's a sickness. Uh, but, uh, yeah, they got the, the Freightliner ambient lighting up there, which is really nice. Uh, and I'll tell you what, once you have a truck that has that, and you switch to a truck that doesn't, like that Volvo I drove for a week or so, uh, you really miss it because it's nice to be able to adjust the, the brightness and dimming and all of that. So uh, anyway, super clean. Um, that's the old mattress that's still in there. I've got some stuff underneath there, so that's why it's bulging up. Um, I've got my, how many drivers do you know that have a, uh, uh, a full-size torque wrench uh, that can do semi-lug nuts? <laughs> I do. Um, I got one. Um, yeah, that's just me. I carry tools. I carry a lot of tools. Um, and I know how to use them. Step back. Um, anyway, two brand new mattresses rolled up there. So those are memory foam mattresses. And uh, when you pop those bags, they inflate like balloons. And uh, they're incredibly comfortable. They're really nice mattresses. So kudos to Schneider, whoever decided to get those. Um, anytime they, uh, they have a new truck or when they swap drivers, um, you know, they, they get brand new mattresses in there, which is fantastic. Um, and there's that emergency escape door. You can see right now I got all my storage bins where the mattress goes, obviously. Uh, but you can see it just opens up right there to the bed. Um, another, uh, nice touch that Schneider does. Um, of course they got the Freightliner factory fridge, um, which for the uninitiated, is here um so you got fridge freezer um pretty nice you know it's not huge but it's nice uh but you know the other side of that not being huge is you get a nice junk drawer which is actually quite handy um ends up uh, carrying a lot of stuff in there and i love this platform because i end up putting uh you know my coffee i got a keurig machine a single cup and uh, a hot water kettle uh, you know, to make oatmeal and, and tea and stuff like that. So, and ramen noodles and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, I, I use just normal Velcro to put them in there and they never budge. Uh, so it works great. Um, already got my microwave strapped in. Um, and another nice touch that Schneider does on all their trucks is they actually put the TV mount arm in there, which is fantastic. Uh, a lot of companies blow that off. Um, and it's really nice because let me see if I can, you can't do this with two hands or with one hand, there's an unlock thing that you have to pull to get it to move. But this thing swings out. Of course, now I just got the grease all over me. It swings out um, so you can kind of watch your TV over here. But then if you need to get in and out of that door, you can swing it and it swings a lot easier when the TV is attached to it. Uh, you can swing it like straight this way so that you can get in and out of that door and that you can also lift the bunk because the bunk, you know, comes up this way. Um, so it's, it's a really nice mount, um, and it's really nice that, uh, that Schneider puts that in there, because like I say, a lot of trucking companies don't, uh, and that's a pain in the neck, because then you gotta fiddle around on that window and do all sorts of ugly looking mounts, and not a fan. So, uh, anyway, um, trying not to get you sick as I spin around here, uh, but the truck is beautiful. I mean, it's in great shape. Um, under the hood is immaculate. Um, you know, of course, you know the, all the storage. I mean, you've seen a zillion and one freight liners on the internet. Uh, you know, but a nice, nice size closet. And uh, another nice thing that uh, Schneider does, 
And this is something that I've grown accustomed to. Now, I know that on the 2024 models, I've seen that uh, it doesn't seem to be there anymore. So they may have phased it out. But I'm a huge fan of this little side window here, this little side flop out. So that, that little flap out is for air. And there's like a little, you know, a screen and stuff in there. But that fan is wonderful. Uh, and it's a reversible fan. So some people don't know that that you can pull it out, flip it around, and shove it back in, and now it can either suck in or blow out. And of course, you know, you wanna open that first, but then, and it has this beautiful constant hum, and it's wonderful to sleep to. Uh, and also, if you're a smoker like I am, uh, you can get that to vent out, uh, and if you do end up smoking in the back of the truck, you know, just, Chill out on your bed and smoke close to that fan, it blows it right out so that your whole truck doesn't smell like an ashtray. Um, the other nice thing that they have is they have, uh, the truck has OptiIdle with an EPU, so not an APU. Um, APUs run on diesel fuel. Um, this one is electronic. Uh, they also have a reading lamp that comes out that's really nice. Um, but um, also an Eaton, this control panel here, is the inverter that's an eaton uh, sine wave inverter 1800 watts fantastic uh, next to that is the spar bunk heater so in addition to having uh the epu the electronic uh auxiliary power unit that drives your air conditioning and all that stuff when the engine is off um, they also have that bunk heater uh, for the winter time if it gets super cold that does run off of a trickle of diesel doesn't use much, just a few drops here and there, uh, and it heats like a oven. <laughs> Those things are super efficient. They get super warm. Um, so very, very cool setup. Um, and I know that there's a lot of hardcore people out there that say, oh, you know, don't give me any of the electronic crap. I want an APU. Well, I'll tell you what, I've had two trucks now with APUs, and I've had three trucks with EPUs. I'll take the EPU any day of the week. Um, yes, it will start your engine uh, to recharge the second bank of batteries that's in the truck that it runs off of, uh, but it only does that uh, every now and then. Uh, it doesn't do it all the time, um, but it will once the battery levels get too far down. It will start the engine and idle for a while just to charge up those batteries and then shut the engine back off. Um, but you get so used to it that it doesn't disturb you at all. Uh, and you never have to worry about, you know, the maintenance and all the crap with APUs. And APUs are, you know, they, they crap out. They need maintenance. They're always loud. Um, they're just a pain in the ass. They don't work nearly as smoothly and as an efficient, efficiently as uh, the EPUs do. So my own personal preference, you can disagree with me. That's fine. Uh, we live in America. It's a free country. Everybody's entitled. Um, that's just my personal opinion. But anyway, uh, that's it. That is the grand tour of uh, my new home and uh, looking very much forward to getting going. Um, it will be uh, after this holiday weekend. I'm just going to chill out until then, get this truck set up, and then uh, come next week uh, after the holiday, we will, uh, we will get running. So uh, until then... Yeah.